Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up PCSX2, which is a PlayStation 2 emulator, on your Linux machine. So I'm using Ubuntu, you could be using Pop OS, you could be using Fedora. I mean, honestly, it doesn't really matter too much. The steps will be very similar or the same. And if you have any questions, feel free to just leave a post in or on our Discord group or you know in the comments. So I just want to say that this video is not condoning piracy. It is for educational purposes only. And you should legally obtain you know, the bio file, the game that you try, etc. 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 So you might notice that you know it looks like Windows for me, and that's just because I'm running you know Linux in a virtual machine. I don't recommend doing that. You'll get the best performance if you do it you know natively, but you can do it, but again, this is just easier for me in terms of recording. So first of all, open up your web browser and you want to go ahead and download PCSX2. You type in PCSX2 and go to the downloads page. But we can go on here and I'll show you where the download link is in case Google doesn't show it there. And you know, you can actually just do it from the home page or go to download, and you know, you get basically the same thing latest stable, which is 1.6. You don't want that, that's old, or latest nightly, which is newer. And honestly, it is stable, even though they say sometimes it can be buggy, most of the time it's fine. Just click the you know. That version there and okay so it's almost done I'll wait for it to complete and then I'll close down the browser okay let's close this down now if we open up files we go to downloads in here I've got a few so I'm going to delete these this was an older version I had I've got a game here Crash Bandicoot and you know it, it'll probably be in like a bin or a bin queue format or dot ISO format either is fine you need the BIOS as well for legal purposes I cannot tell you where to obtain this but if you literally google ps2 BIOS download you'll, you'll get it it's not difficult Okay, so with this, let's open it up. If we double click this, we get this error. Could not, blah, blah, blah. And if we right click, go to properties, go to permissions, select allow executing file as program. Now, if we double click it, still nothing happens. Oh, it appeared. Fair enough, it did work. And that's because it's, I had already, you know, kind of, you know, set it up. So if you haven't set it up, and you know what? I'll fully wipe it and just bear with me. So home and you make sure show hidden files and we will actually need that later. And if we go to config PCSX2, if I delete that. Now if I double click it, I mean, it's still, to be fair, opens it up. But most of the time I find it won't open it up from the get go. So what you'll need to do, and let me show you, you'll need to open up terminal. So just go to terminal. You need to type in do cd downloads. This is assuming that you haven't already chained the directory. And in here, if we type in ls, we can see everything that's here. You need to launch this up. To launch it, you press dot forward slash and just type that in pcsx2, etc. etc. If you just type in p, because that's all we've got there that begins with p, or like pcsx2, and then press tab, press enter, it launches this up. For you, you'll probably get an error. And what you'll need to do is go ahead and download Fuse. And do, 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 do. let me just go into my history so I can grab hold of Fuse. And what you want to do is it'll give you an error, most likely, ask you to install Fuse. Just go to the link they say is on there. And you know, the link's right here as well. I'll put it in the description. And depending on which version you are on, will of Ubuntu, let's say, or you know, one of the other distros, the commands will vary. So for me, I know I'm on this version. So you can find that by going to settings and go to about and where is it? 2204. There we go. So you just literally copy these two commands into terminal, paste, enter. You're asking me for my password. That's your password that you use to log in and type it in. It will not appear, not even using asterisks. 
for security purposes, click enter. You'll go through the process, click enter again, that's fine. And I've already got it set up and downloaded, and it, I mean downloaded and installed. So it probably won't take that long for me. It's still taking a while. I think it's just re-downloading stuff. But just wait patiently. And then finally we'll run that final command. So if we now run this final command, press enter. So it didn't ask for a password this time. The reason you did though, because of sudo, which is super user do, that's what it stands for. So it's basically an elevated permissions. And the reason it didn't this time is just simply for the fact that we're in the same session. The session hasn't timed out either by time or it hasn't been, you know, shut down by pressing the X button. Therefore the sudo command this time did not require the password. If you had shut terminal down, reopened it, that would have been a new session and running this command would have required the password. That's fine. Just wanted to let you know. And now we can either just use dot forward slash to open it or, you know, try double clicking it. I think fuse might actually fix the issue of, you know, opening. Yeah, actually, that's my bad. Fuse is the reason why it won't open if you double click it. Otherwise, you know, it's fine. Okay, now in here, there's a couple of things that you need to do. So first of all, go to BIOS and you want to add your BIOS file and this is the directory. You can change the directory, but I'm going to leave it as is. So let's navigate to that directory and I'm going to copy the BIOS file first. Copy and it is home. If you don't have home here, go to other locations, computer, and then from here, USR, no, not USR, sorry. Home, there we go. Home, then the name. And if you do it via this and click home, it'll automatically take you into your user directory. So that's the reason my user directory doesn't appear there, but it does when I'm doing the regular, you know, route via the computer there. So just a little notice, just to bear that in mind. And by default, yours will look like this. So the .config folder won't appear. Click the menu button here, also known as the burger button, and click show hidden files. Go to, it's show hidden files and folders. So it's not just hidden files. And go to config, or .config, pcsx2, BIOS, and now paste your file right here. Now, if we go back to here, click refresh list, the BIOS has now appeared. And in here, you can, you know, feel free to tweak these settings. Same with graphics, feel free to, you know, go to rendering, increase the resolution, for example, with the internal resolution. I always recommend that you try it as default and up and, you know, up the resolution as you need to add anti-aliasing, add other filters and see how they work depending on your computer. And by default, memory cards should be created. And other than that, you should be all good to go. There's two things remaining at this point. First of all, go to settings and go to controllers. Now you need to configure your controller. And in this case, we're just going to configure one controller port one, DualShock 2, and just select DualShock 2. And by doing the settings, you can invert the stick, you know, put dead zones on. That is useful if you are using a real controller. And I'll create a separate video for that. And, you know, macros if you want to do some combination keys. But if we're in binding, it automatically does a good, you know, binding for like keyboard, pretty decent to be fair. And you can click a new profile, create a new profile, press OK. I'm not going to do that, but you can load and delete them. Benefit of profiles is this. It allows you to have different configurations for different games, different game genres. Maybe you'll have a different one for a shooter versus a racing game versus like a action adventure game. It also allows you to have different configurations for different users as well. So there's a lot of advantages. This is one of them for, you know, in terms of using an emulator. So I'll leave that as it. Like I said, I will actually go ahead and show you, I'll, you know, have a separate set of videos to show you how to set up controllers like PS4, PS5, maybe even PS3, Xbox switch that sort of stuff let me know what the controllers you would like to see you can do the same for p you know control port 2 select dualshock 2 etc etc you know ooh, yeah my thing has just crashed that does happen and that's not to do yours should be fine i find it just happens to me in my virtual machine so again if that again you shouldn't have that issue of this you know loaded back up and let's go back to downloads, launch this bad boy up. 
first of all let's make sure bios folder yes that's us still all configured and in controllers we're all good etc etc as you feel free to map the other controllers and you can you know enable multi-tap as well and we'll look into these other modes later on in a separate video but multi-tap you can have more than one controller i mean more than two controllers click x and then finally you just need to either add game directory or scan for new games and you can do it from here but let me show you where to add it once you've done it from here and you need to add more game directories so this is you know the supported format right here and go to system i mean sorry settings game list and now in here select the plus button there select your directory so for me it's just you know it's gonna go there no 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 so yeah frahan or computer and you go home frahan or your username downloads and i'll select choose feel probably best if you have a separate directory just for get roms that's what i recommend some people even have it on an external storage really helps and now this scanning recursively what that means is you'll scan the directories within that directory so if you've done some organization maybe you've organized all the crash bandicoot games into one folder maybe you've organized all the final fantasy games into one folder all the grand theft auto games into one folder etc you'll want to click yes i recommend that anyway you'll go scan for it or you can you know scan for new games as well and rescan all games as well as well so it depends on how many files folders you have there that will depend on how long it takes I recommend like you know having a separate folder for ROMs and having a separate folder for PS2. So it's always going through PS2 files and folders instead of going through you know hundreds of you know NES, hundreds of SNES, hundreds of PlayStation 1 games, you know, a bunch of PS3 games. It just slows things down. So you know make sure you organize it, click close, and now to launch it, you just double click it. And then launch it. Uh yeah. So yeah, again, I keep getting this crashing issue on my vm machine i just want to show you the game launching even if it's into the load screen that's fine i'll be happy with that if again right now i'm just using a virtual machine just for recording purposes i want to make sure i you know sh you know prove to you <laughs> that it's working and now if i double click I'm just trying to load it up. Being weird. Okay, let me try it again. And it should load up. It should start. There you go, loading. I'm going to shut it down because it's probably going to shut down anyway. I'm going to shut down without saving. And, you know, feel free to, you know, load and save states, which are great for saving and loading from any part in the game, even if the game originally did not allow you to save and load from that part. I'll have separate videos covering that. That's not Linux specific. That's just PCSX2 specific. So I'll have separate videos covering that, how to map controllers on Linux, because that is more Linux specific. And that is it. Sorry for the crashing. But, you know, in my virtual machine, I've been getting these issues and that's it if you have any questions feel free to join the discord group link in the description if you need some help with you know downloading files feel free to post in the discord group as well all links mentioned will be in the description and if you like the video give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button if you didn't like the video hit the thumbs down hit the subscribe still and continue watching and continue hating by hitting the thumbs down <laughs> only joking but yeah feel free to and as usual i'll see you in the next one bye bye